or if you turn to Matthew chapter 12, Matthew chapter 12, verse 1, it says, At that time Yeshua went out on the Sabbath day through the corn, and His disciples were in hunger and began to pluck the ears of corn and to eat. But when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto Him, Behold, thy disciples do that which is not lawful to do upon the Sabbath day. But He said unto them, Have ye not read what David did when he was in hunger, and they that were with them? How he entered into the house of God and did eat the show, and did eat the showbread, which was not lawful for him to eat, neither for them which were with him, but only for the priests. Or have ye not read in the law how that on the Sabbath days the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath and are blameless? But I say unto you that in this place is one greater than the temple. But if but if ye had known what this meaneth, I will have mercy and not sacrifice. Ye would not have condemned the guiltless, for the Son of Man is Lord, even of the Sabbath day. All right, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Yeshua Jehovah, we just come to you this afternoon. I pray, Yeshua, that you bless this message. I pray you use it for your glory and your praise. And I thank you, Yeshua, that you, you died for us, the one sacrifice for all time, to make us perfect, to make us keepers of the law and be found guiltless to stand before thee and be worthy to enter in, into the gates into that city. And you show by and by your Holy Spirit, you show writing our your law in our hearts. We're born again from day by day into your image. And I thank you for this message and bless today in thy precious name. So be it. So here in Matthew chapter 12, verse 1, and I've preached this before, but we're gonna go and we're gonna look at it from from the things we've been uh, reading about the last couple of weeks. In Matthew chapter 1, verse 12, verse, verse 1, it says, At that time Yeshua went out, went on the Sabbath day through the corn, or the grain, or the wheat fields, and His disciples were hungered and began to pluck the ears of corn and to eat. But when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto Him, Behold, thy disciples do that which is not lawful to do upon the Sabbath day. They accused the Pharisees which had an oral law, a traditional law, made up man's law, which was not of God. It's not of his breath. It, no, it was never ordained of God. God never commanded it. They had all these laws, all these restrictions they did on the Sabbath. And they, and they, and one of them apparently was that you can't even pluck food if you're hungered from the field because they'll call that work. And you're not supposed to work on the Sabbath day. So they, they went to Yeshua and it says, Why do thy disciples do that which is not lawful? to do on the Sabbath day. And here Yeshua, He teaches them things about the eternal law. And you, and you, if you read this, and I know I, when I preached it last time, here in Matthew chapter 12, it's very deep. And Yeshua ran circles around them. Yeshua is the living Word. He's the, he's the Word became flesh. He, he's the God, God Himself. His breath that gave the law is standing there speaking to the Pharisees, and they actually accuse God of sin. They actually accuse God and His disciples of sin. And here Yeshua, Jehovah says to them, He says, Have you not read what David did when he was in hunger? And they that were with him, how he entered into the house of God and did eat the showbread, which was not lawful for him to eat, neither for them that were with him, but only for the priests. King David did this. If you read about it in the, I believe in first or second Kings, they went into the temple and they were hungry and they asked the priest, what food do you have? And the priest told them, we don't have any food but the showbread. He, and he, they went and took and they ate of it. All right? What's a higher law? A man's going to starve to death. Just like James says, if a man say he has faith and not works, his faith is dead being alone. If a brother or sister is a hungered, or naked, won't you feed him or clothe him? Faith without works. All right? So here, Yeshua is explaining to them the, the spirit of the law. There's the letter of the law and the spirit of the law. When God wrote, and we read, read last Sabbath, how God will write His, He, 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 says, he says in Jeremiah, in chapter 22, verse 9, He says, a new covenant will I make with the house of Israel in those days. I'll write my laws in their hearts and in their minds. When God writes His laws, is He writing it with 
paper and pen? Is he writing it in stone? No, he's writing it in your heart through the Holy Spirit. The law is spiritual. The law is spiritual. All right? And the law is from the beginning. And Yeshua is explaining to him the law, the letter of the law and the spirit of the law. And then he gives another example in verse 5. He says, Or have you not read in the law how that on the Sabbath days the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath and are blameless? How did, they, how did the priests profane the, sa- the Sabbath on the Sabbath days and they're blameless? Aren't they working? Aren't, aren't they doing their, what, what, what they're supposed to do on, on the Sabbath day, what was commanded? They're taking sacrifices. They're offering the table. They're offering bread. They're making the bread to put on the table, show bread. They're lighting the candles. They're lighting a fire. You're not supposed to do those things on the Sabbath day, yet they're blameless. God, 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 the spirit of the law in front of God, they're working. Literally, they're working. Here I'm preaching on the Sabbath day. Am I breaking the Sabbath by preaching on the Sabbath day? If, you, if they're ministering on the Sabbath day, are they breaking the law? No. Yeshua says, Or have you not read in the law how that on the Sabbath days the priest in the temple profane the Sabbath and are blameless? But I say unto you that in this place is one greater than the temple. But if ye had known what this meaneth, I will have mercy and not sacrifice. Ye would not have condemned the guiltless. Go look up this from the Old Testament. I will have mercy and sacrifice. A body thou hast prepared me. Here Yeshua says, if ye had known what this meaneth, if you understood what was written by the prophets in the Old Testament, what this meaneth. He says in verse 6, But I say unto you that in this place, right before you, is standing someone greater than the temple. They didn't understand that this is Christ, that this is Mashiach, this is God Almighty. In the volume of the book, it is written of me, I come to do thy will, O God. This is the reference to sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body thou hast prepared me. They didn't understand what this meaneth. Because the body that was prepared is the Lamb of God slain from before the foundation of the world. Before Kronos Ionios. Christ is the Lamb slain. That's always been the plan. That's the gospel of all ages. That's the good message of all ages. The good message of all ages for the, for the sacrifice and payment for your sin. He is the one sacrifice for all time. This is what Yeshua is trying to explain to them about the law. The law was before time. I've, I've said, I'm going to say this over and over until it sinks in. The law is spiritual. It is the, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. All right, let's turn to that. Let's go read, read this. In John, Gospel of John chapter 1, verse 1. The Apostle John writes, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. They don't understand it. Just like Yeshua tells the Pharisees, if you had understood, if you, in verse 7 he says, but if, had, if ye had known what this meaneth, I will have mercy and not sacrifice. Ye would not have condemned the guiltless. For the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath days. He's the one who created it. In John Gospel of John chapter 1 verse 6, says, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. Talking about John the Baptist. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. What does it mean? That was the true light that lighteth every man that cometh into the world. The light is spirit. The Torah is spiritual. All right? The Word of God gives light. What is the light that lighteth every man that cometh into the world? 
God says, I'll write my laws in their hearts and in their minds. It's your, the conscience. Every man is born with a conscience. Every person in the world is born with a conscience to discern, to know between good and evil. They're given some light, all right? And, you're, and every man, sometime in their life, has chosen to break God's command, commandments, to break God's law, to, to go from light, from perfection, just like Adam and Eve were created perfect in the Garden of Eden. They sinned and fell short of the glory of God. And we're going to talk about what happens when sin enters the world. What happens when you break the law? And the law, as I explained to you, is eternal. It's not just written here in the Old and New Testament. The law is spiritual. It's always been spiritual. It's been from the beginning, just like we read here in the Gospel of John. Then it says in John chapter 1, verse 10, He was in the world, and the world was made by Him, and the world knew Him not. They didn't recognize Christ. They didn't know this is Jehovah God in the flesh. He came unto His own, His own sheep, and His own received Him not. But as many as received Him, to them gave He power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on His name. They become the sons of God. What was Adam? Who was Adam's father? Did Adam have a father? No. God made him a son. Even at, He's the first Adam. The second Adam from above us. We read these songs from Charles Wesley. Reinstate us in thy love. All right? Hark, that's his, Hark the angel song. All of those songs are spiritual. They're teaching you something. There's doctrines in them. Listen to the words. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Christ said, but I say unto you that in this place is one greater than the temple. He was the living word. He's the living law. He's, he's, he's showing the world how to live in holiness and without breaking the commandments. So he corrects the, the Pharisees. He says in verse, end of verse 7, I will have mercy in that sacrifice. Ye would not have condemned the guiltless. For the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath day. What is, what did Yeshua, what, what is Yeshua teaching? He's teaching and clarifying the law. All throughout the scriptures, you have the question of the law. You have the question of what is good and what is evil. What is right and what is wrong. From Genesis to Revelation, we know when sin entered the world, then came what? The curses of the punishment. What were the curses? It was the, 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 the penalties for sin. All sin must be paid for. All sin must be, as it says, the Apostle Paul wrote, must be propitiated for. Christ was our propitiation, our payment, our, satisf our satisfying or redemption of, of, of our redemption or payment for our, of the penalty for our sin. Turn a book of Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2. All sin must be paid for. All Someone has to pay the price for sin. In Genesis chapter 2, we're going to start in verse 15. And Jehovah Elohim took the man... And put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And here's a commandment. Here's a law that God gave in verse 16. And Jehovah Elohim commanded the man saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou shalt eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. And Jehovah Elohim said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a help meet for him. And out of the ground 
and it, and it talks about how Yeshua took the rib of Adam and made Eve. All right. So the law was given to Adam here in Genesis chapter 2, in verses 16 and 17. He says, Of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. The curse of death will come upon you. That's the punishment for breaking this commandment, this law. In Genesis chapter 3, verse 1, it says, The serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which Jehovah Elohim had made. So the serpent, the devil, Satan was already fallen by this time. He, he already rebelled and he, he continues in his rebellion. And he's, he's going to get Adam and Eve to, or he's going to deceive Eve first. And then Adam will, will take and also break the commandment. He says, says here, he was more susceptible than any beast of the field which Jehovah God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. What does the devil do? He twists the law. He takes away from the law or he adds to God's, God's word. Till today, the same things the Pharisees were adding to God's law, accusing Christ himself of breaking the law. And he's the word become flesh. And Christ teaches them. He rebukes them. He tells them, have you not read? He explains to them, that one stand, there's one standing here, in this place that is greater than the temple. So the devil says, Hath God said, he twists God's word. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. This commandment was given to Adam, and Adam taught Eve the commandment to keep. Adam taught Eve, this is the commandment of God, this is the law that God wants us to keep. In verse 4 it says, And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die, for God, know, for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as God, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. So the devil deceives them and says, you're not going to die. There's going to be no punishment for sin. You're going to be more wiser. Your eyes are going to be open and you're going to be as God knowing good and evil. There's the lie. The devil sells the lie that sin is okay and that there's no penalty for sin. Every sin is going to be uh, paid for one way or another. Either you're going to pay it yourself or you're going to plead the blood of Christ, His one sacrifice for all, all time, for all sin, for all time. And you're, going to, and you're going to have your sins paid for by Christ Himself. So He lies. He deceives Eve. And, and, and she, she, she was deceived and she looked at the tree and it says, well, it looks good for food. And that it was pleasant to the eyes and the tree desired to make one wise. She believed the lie. And she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also to, unto her husband with her and he did eat. So they just broke the law. So what happens? When you break God's holy commandment and all his commandments are holy and good and righteous. And you break it and then you expect things to go on as normal. You expect to go on in your way, breaking it. And disobeying God, which God said, you're not going to do it. He even warns, he says, the day you eat thereof. He says, for in the day that, you, that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. God knows what's going to happen. Because there's going to be a, a spiritual change. And there's going to be a physical change. Before Adam and Eve sinned and ate of the forbidden fruit of that tree in the midst of the garden. They were holy and they were clothed with light. They were so sanctified that their whole bodies were light. They were clothed with robes of light. When they sin, what happens? They, their light, their sanctification ends. They're no longer holy and they stop shining and they see they're naked. All right? It says in the scripture that the righteous shall shine forth as the firmament. When we get to heaven, 
And we're in our new bodies, a spiritual body, not an earth, earthly body, but a heavenly body made in His image, just like Adam and Eve were originally made. Adam was made, Eve was made in the image of man from the bone of Adam. Adam was made in the image of God. When we get back to heaven, we're going to shine like the firmament, firmament of the sun. All right? In Genesis chapter 3, verse 7, And the eyes of them were both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of Jehovah Elohim walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of Adonai, Jehovah Elohim, amongst the trees of the garden. What, what else happens when you sin? You don't want to go near your heavenly Father. You don't, you don't have fellowship anymore. That fellowship is broken. That relationship is broken with God. And you feel guilty. You feel unclean. You feel condemned. You feel burdened. You feel something's wrong in your soul because you sinned. And you don't have any peace. How can you live? Well, before I got saved, there was such a burden of sin upon me. I remember the day I got saved. The Holy Spirit entered into me and I was born again through the Holy Spirit. I felt that what came off me was like a thousand pounds. Thousands of pounds just came off the weight. The weight came off my shoulders. I felt lighted. I felt everything. I looked outside and everything became brighter. My eyes were clean, like clear, clarity came back to my to my eyes where everything was became clear. I felt these things. I saw these things. This is there's something happens when you break God's law. And you're not you're never going to have peace ever in your life if you go on in your life with your sins unforgiven. You need to come to Christ. You need to come to a place of repentance where you acknowledge that you have broken God's commandments and that you Turn from your heart, from your heart, from within you, that you never want to sin again. You don't want to sin, and you believe in Christ, God Almighty, who died for us on the cross, on the tree. So here, they hide themselves. In verse 9, here's the call. And Jehovah Elohim called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid. Because I was naked and I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou wast naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? What does Christ want from Adam? He wants repentance and he wants a confession. He wants you to confess your sins. Just like he wants Adam to confess his sins. Not make excuses like here Adam does in verse 12. And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree and I did eat. And Jehovah God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. And Jehovah God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, all right, because of sin, the devil, every sin, every, every single act of sin is going to be punished. And Yeshua Jehovah says to the serpent, He says, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and, he, and between thy seed and her seed. He shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow, and thy, and thy conception in sorrow. Thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of the which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake, and sorrow shalt thou eat it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground. For out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and... Unto dust thou shalt thou return. And Adam called his wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all living. 
Unto Adam also and to his wife did Jehovah God make coats of skins and clothe them. So here, the, for, every, for the sins that they committed, and this was the first sin that Adam and Eve committed, there were curses given. Their curses were the punishment for, for sin because, and it was their sentence, and they were cast out from heaven. They were cast out of the gates of heaven, and a flaming sword was given to, to guard the way to the tree of life. So they went out of paradise defiled, all right? Remember that they went out of paradise defiled. Turn the book of Revelation, chapter 21. From cover to cover, it's all about the law. And what was the first commandment given? And what was the first commandment broken? The commandment was not to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Right and wrong. That's God's law. God's trying to teach us from the very beginning, all right, until, until the very end. To obey His voice and not to break His commandments. This is all by God's plan, His prothesis, His plan of salvation before the foundation of the world. He already had the plan. He already, under, he already knew all these things. Alright? In Revelation chapter 21, it says in verse 22, And I saw no temple therein, for Jehovah God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. If we read in Matthew chapter 12, in verse 6, what did Yeshua say? But I say unto you that in this place is one greater than the temple. Alright? That temple on the earth was made with hands. Here in Revelation, at the consummation, at the end of the world, when at the perdition of ungodly men and the redemption of God's saints in light, at the final harvest. Here is the explanation given to the Apostle John when he went up and saw heavenly Jerusalem. He saw the angel took him up and showed him Mount Zion in heaven. And he, and he writes here in Revelation 21 verse 22, And I saw no temple therein, for Jehovah Elohim Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it. For the glory of God did lighten it. The glory of God did lighten it. And the Lamb is the light thereof. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it. And the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. And the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day. For there shall be no night there. And they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it. And they shall in no wise, listen. This is the punishment for sin for Adam and Eve was to be cast out of paradise. For they weren't holy no more. They were defiled. All right? Until they were born again in Christ. Until their sins were paid for. Listen to Revelation 21 verse 27. And they shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth. In heaven, no one's going to be defiled. No one's going to be yet in their sins, yet guilty, yet defiled, and enter in, into heaven. Neither whatsoever worketh abomination, or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. And when is the Lamb's book of life written? Before time. All right? Then in Revelation chapter 22, all right? So, but they which are, only people going to enter into heaven are they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. And I've said this before, the Garden of Eden, the Lamb's book of life was written before time and the Garden of Eden literally means in, in uh, Syriac, in Aramean it means Garden of Time. Revelation chapter 22, verse 1. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. 
In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there a tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits. This is the same tree that when Adam and Eve were kicked out of heaven, God, God put the flaming sword. In Genesis chapter 3, in verse 22, it says, And Jehovah God said, Behold, the man has become one of us, as one of us, to know good and evil, and now lest he put forth his hand, and take also of the tree of life, and eat and live forever. Therefore Jehovah Elohim sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword which turneth every way to keep the way to the tree of life. You can't get to the tree of life. Adam and Eve couldn't get to the tree of life. And you can't because of the flaming sword which turneth every way which turned every way. By the time you get to Revelation chapter 22, when, there, when Yeshua comes back and the heavenly Jerusalem descends from heaven, it says in verse 2 of Revelation 22, in the midst of the street of it and on either side of the river was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner fruits and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse. Alright? Understand. Why isn't there a curse anymore? Why? Why are we allowed to go and partake and eat of the tree of the guard of the tree of life? Because our names are written in the Lamb's book of life, slain from before the foundation of the world. We're worthy. That means we're not sinning anymore. That means we're not breaking God's commandments anymore. We're restored. We're no longer defiled. We've put on, we're, we're, we've been given a new body. We've been trans, translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of His dear Son. We're made holy and perfect again. In Revelation 22 verse 3 it says, And there shall be no more curse. There is no more curse because there's no more sin. And there's no more penalty for sin. Nobody's cursed anymore. There's no more curse. But the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and His servants shall serve Him, and they shall see His face. They're not, going to hide his, they're not going to hide themselves from the presence of God among the trees of the garden. They're going to come and stand before God, and they're going to look, look upon Christ. And they shall see His face, and His name shall be in their foreheads. And there shall be no night there, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun for Jehovah God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. And he said unto me, These things are faithful and true. And Adonai, Jehovah Elohim, of the holy prophet, sent his angel to show unto his servant the things which must shortly be done. Behold, I come quickly. Yeshua says, Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. Blessed are those who understand and obey the gospel and keep his commandments. All of these things, from Genesis to Revelation, Je Revelation 22, 3, it says, and there shall be no more curse. We read last Sabbath how the law was given in the Old Testament, but Israel never kept it. It was a broken covenant. Israel, throughout their history, went through cycles of blessing and cursing. They went through a time of keeping God's commandments and being blessed, to a time of not keeping and uh, breaking God's commandments and being cursed. All right, they went through this over and over, and and and, and, I, and as we read last Sabbath in Jeremiah twenty nine, God says, "I'll behold, I make a new covenant with the house of Israel in those in 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 in, in those days. I'll write my laws in their hearts and in their minds." God's plan from the beginning was to write His laws in hearts and write His. Laws in our hearts and our minds. This was always God's plan. He knew that man was going to break his law. All right? Everything written was written for our learning. It's written for us. The law was our school, the law was our the schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. Israel never kept the law. It was a broken covenant. So God's plan from the beginning was to write his laws in our hearts and our minds where that's why we must be born again 
in Christ. Matthew chapter 12, what Yeshua was saying, go back to Matthew chapter 12. What Yeshua said in verses 6 and 7, Yeshua says, But I say unto you that in this place is one greater than the temple. Because it's a temple. Yeshua says, Destroy this temple, and in three days I rebuild it without hands. He's speaking of his body. He's speaking of what Christ went to prepare a place for us, a temple without hands. Then in verse 7 it says, But if ye had known or understood what this meaneth, I will have mercy and not sacrifice. Ye will not have condemned the guiltless. Turn to the book of Hebrews chapter 10. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 10, verse 1. And here the Apostle Paul writes, and he's referencing the same same thing that the prophets spoke in the Old Testament and the same thing Yeshua is explaining to them and running circles around the Pharisees. He says in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 1, For the law having a shadow of good things to come and not the very image of the things can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the comers thereunto perfect. For then would they not have ceased to be offered because that the worshippers once purged should have had no more conscience of sins. But in those sacrifices there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. The blood of bulls and goats, he says here in verse 4, For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats should take away sins. Wherefore when he cometh into the world, speaking of Christ, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body... Thou hast prepared me. This is the Old Testament verse that Yeshua says and quotes in Matthew 12. But if he had known what this meaneth, I will have mercy and not sacrifice. Ye would not have condemned the guilt, the guiltless. Yeshua says, I would have had mer- I would have mercy and not sacrifice. Yeshua is speaking as Yehovah, because he is Yehovah. He says, I would, I will have mercy and not sacrifice. All right, and here the Apostle Paul, he, he, he expands it. He says, for, for it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats should take away sins. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body thou hast prepared me. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin thou hast had no pleasure. Then said I, Lo, I come. In the volume of the book it is written of me to do thy will, O God. Above when he said, sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings, an offering for sin, thou wouldest not, you won't accept it. God will not accept the sacrifice and the offering and the burnt offering and the offering for sin. That's not God's, that was not God's plan ever to make the, the comers therefore perfect, to make them worthy and undefiled to enter into heaven. That's not God's plan of salvation. What was God's plan of salvation? His self. He gave Himself, His own lifeblood for our, for our sin, to, to pay for our sin once and for all time. He says here in Hebrews chapter 10, it, it, it's written, He says, Above when He said, when Christ Yeshua said, Sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings, and offering for sin thou wouldest not, neither had His pleasure therein, which are offered by the law. Okay? This is the law of Moses he's referencing. Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second, the better covenant, the original covenant. By the which will, by the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Yeshua Mashiach once for all. And every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God, from henceforth expect, expecting till his enemies, that's the devil and his seed, the seed of Satan, from henceforth expecting till his enemies to be made his footstool. For by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. He's perfected where we're no longer defiled. 
where we, we went from being guilty and unclean to clean and holy. For by one offering He hath perfected forever, for all time, them that are sanctified. Wherefore the Holy Ghost also is witness is a witness to us. For after that He had said before, This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith Jehovah, I will put my laws into their hearts, and in their minds will I write them. And their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Now where the remission of these is, there is no more offering for sin. In one chapter, the Apostle Paul writes everything I've been preaching for the last couple of weeks. Everything is here. Everything is here about the law and about the sacrifices, the laws given, commanded to Moses. What is it all? The whole volume of the book, the whole scriptures, all of the law and the prophets is concerning Christ Yeshua and His one sacrifice for all time. Yeshua said, You search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, but they are they which testify of Me. How can you believe, how, if you believe not Moses and his writings, how can you believe my words? For Moses wrote of me. This was God's work. He came to be the Lamb of God, to be to shed his, himself, his own blood, for the sacrifice and propitiation for our sins, once and for all time. That's why there's no more sacrifice of blood and bulls and goats. That's why your, Yeshua says, Behold, your house is left to you desolate. Not one stone shall be left upon another that shall not be thrown down. For the last 2,000 years, there's never been another bull, another goat, another sheep sacrificed for sin because Christ paid for it for all time. And you say, what about the law? And this is, this is, what, this is what gets me. All of the scripture speaks about right and wrong. All the scripture speaks about God's laws and God's commandments and God's judgments and what's clean and what's not clean, what's holy and what's an abomination. And Christians, they don't understand the law. They don't understand that you're saved because you've sinned. And what is sin? Sin is a transgression of the law. And they teach, oh, you're saved, but you can go and break the law. What kind of a nonsense is this? How can we which are saved live in sin any longer? God forbid that sin is ever named. God's law is to be kept. And like I've been telling you, there's the letter of the law written and there's the spirit of the law. The Holy Spirit, there are endless, endless rights and wrongs. You obey His voice. You walk in the light. You put on Christ. Put on the garments of Christ. Be clothed with righteousness. Be clothed with the law. Over and over the scripture says, Old and New Testament. You receive the law. You live in the law. You walk in it. You walk in His commandments and you obey His voice. It says... Yeshua said, If he had known and understood what this meaneth, all right, understand what this meaneth. Understand the new covenant. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 16. This is the new covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith Jehovah. I will put my laws into their hearts, and in their minds will I write them. And their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Now where remission of these is, there is no more offering for sin. That's why you cannot sin after you get saved. Willfully, willful sin, there is nothing but a fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation which shall devour the enemies. Christ is, going, is, Christ will, is waiting from Hebrews chapter 10, verse 12 and 13. But this man, Christ, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever sat down on the right hand of God from henceforth expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. All right? His enemies, either you're going to become his enemy or you're going to become his saint. 
You're going to be adopted, his adopted son. Until the last day comes, and then it's going to be too late. The day of Christ comes. You have a chance still to repent and to turn to Christ and plead his blood and accept his one sacrifice for all sin. The law is eternal. Many people don't understand the gospel and the law. The law is eternal. It's before time. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. The word, the word of God, Christ, conquered death and hell and the penalty for sin. He came and he rescued us from sin. He went before us. Christ what went the forerunner, went before us into that within the veil, into the most holy place to search out a resting place for us. All right, all of these things are a picture of shadow of things to come. It's it's all speaking of Christ. We're we're our rest the final resting place in heaven is a place made without hands. It's not of this building or this cosmos. It's not of this catechesis. Turn to the book of Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3. And here, the Apostle Paul is warning about the Pharisees. He's warning about the twisting of the law, making the law into something which it's not. God's law is eternal. God's law is spiritual. All right? And we have His law written in our hearts and our mind. If you're born again in the new covenant and you're washing Christ's blood, you have the law written in your heart and in your minds. And you have an unction that you receive from Christ. And you're an earthen vessel and you're filled with the Holy Spirit. And you're changed day by day. You're born again day by day into His image. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, as Apostle Peter writes, but of incorruptible by the Word of God. In Galatians chapter 3, verse 1, Apostle Paul writes, O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you that ye should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Yeshua Mashiach hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you? This only would I learn of you, received ye the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. All right? There's a lie that people think and they assume, even because I preach the law so much, that I'm saying that you're saved by keeping the law. I'm not ever. I've never preached that. I've always, I've always preached you're saved by the blood of Christ. There's not one thing you can do, not of the works that we have done, but by Christ's one sacrifice for all time. All right? But there are Pharisees who teach you that, that you, you keep these commandments and these extra commandments and you, these hedge laws, and you'll go to heaven because you're a righteous person. No, you're not. God will not accept it. How many, how many times do I have to read it over and over? The blood of bulls and goats, thou wouldest not, but a body thou hast prepared me. Lo, I come, in the volume of, of the book is written of me. He wouldn't accept it. That was never his plan. That was given to Moses to teach us for that time on earth. That there has to be a sacrifice for sin. So all the time the people would take uh, sacrifices to the high priest. Which stands where? At the east gate. Back into the most holy place. You have to go from the east towards the west. Which direction was Adam and Eve cast out of heaven? From paradise. They were cast out eastward going from the west back towards the east. Where does the judge stand? Behold the judge standeth at the door. Who is the judge? The high priest. He stands at the door, the entrance back into the place where the, of the altar, where the sacrifice is. Christ means Messiah. He means the high priest. He's a high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek, making intercession for us through His blood. When He resurrected, He went up into heaven. He offered upon, in the true tabernacle in heaven, His own blood that speaketh better things. You, than the, than the blood of Abel and his sacrifice that he made before Cain wickedly slew him and killed him. Here in the book of Galatians, it says in verse 2, This only would I learn of you, received ye the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. Are ye so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, are ye now made perfect by the flesh? Have ye suffered so many things in vain, 
if it be yet in vain. He therefore that ministereth to you the Spirit and worketh miracles among you, doth he by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith, even as Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness, know ye therefore that they which are of faith are the, are the same are the children of Abraham. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. So then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. Why are you going to be under the curse? You're under the curse if your sins aren't forgiven. You're under the curse if you think you're going to be doing these man-made laws or thinking you're going to keep the law of Moses and you're going to be right in God's eyes. God will not accept you. He would is not. He will not accept anything but His own blood. He, that's His plan. God, there's not, there's not a, a man good enough to be sacrificed. There's not an angel. There's not any other creature at any, any time that would be able to pay for your sin. But God says, Lo, I come. Jehovah says, I come. In the volume of the book, it is written of me. Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not. A body, a body thou hast prepared me. Christ, the Son of, the Son of God, born of the Virgin Mary, through the ark of her, of her belly, her womb, came through the flood from heaven, born into this earth, born in flesh and blood, became a man and dwelt among us so he can die as a, he can die like a man and shed his blood for us. This was his one sacrifice for all time. Galatians chapter 3, it says in verse 10, For as many as are under the works of the law are under the curse, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. Because no one's been, ever been able to be, keep all of God's commandments all the time. So you're cursed. Once you sin, you're cursed. Once you sin, you die. Alright? It is, it is ordained man, want, uh, man uh, wants to die. And after this is the judgment. In verse 11, it says, But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident for the just shall live by faith. How do we live by faith? What does it mean we live by faith? We live by the faith of Christ, and we walk by faith in Him, doing what? Faith is, uh, is faith a uh, workless effort? No. You have faith, and where faith will make you do what? Walk in the Holy Spirit. Walk in Christ. Pray every day. And keep God's law. You obey His voice. You pray. You, you be, you're prayed up. You pray continually, Apostle Paul says. Put on Christ. Then it says, But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident the just shall live by faith. And the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. That's the same thing that it's written over and over when God gave the law. These laws are to be done and you live in them. That was God's purpose of the law. All right? In verse 13 it says, Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law. The penalty of the law. All those curses, including the death penalty, He's redeemed us from the curse of the law. Being made a curse for us, for as it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Yeshua Mashiach, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Brethren, I speak after the manner of men, though it be it but a man's covenant, yet if it be confirmed, no man disannulleth or addeth thereto. Now to Abraham and to his seed were the promises made. He saith not and to seeds as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed which is Christ. And this I say, that the covenant that was confirmed before of God in Christ, the law which was 430 years after, cannot disannul, that it should make the promise of none effect. For if, for if the inheritance of the law, it is, for if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more of promise, but God gave it to Abraham by promise. 
Wherefore, or what purpose then serveth the law? It was added because of transgressions till the seed should come. What seed is he talking about? The New Testament seed of born again saints should come to whom the promise was made and it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. Now a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one. Is the law then against the promise of God? God forbid, for if there had been a law given which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been up by the law. But the scripture hath concluded all under sin, that the promise by faith of Yeshua Mashiach might be given to them that believe. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith, which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster, or teacher, to bring us unto Christ, Mashiach, that we might be justified by faith. For after that faith is come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. Why? Why? Because God's written all His laws in your hearts and in your minds. You're in the new covenant. You're, of, you're in the better covenant which speaketh better things. Alright? Go read the book of Hebrews. There's three books if, that we've gone through today. Matthew chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 10 and Galatians 3. Study these verses. The end of verse uh, Galatians chapter 3, it says, but in verse 25, But after that faith was come, we are no longer under schoolmaster, for ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Yeshua. For as many of, of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. You've put on the law. You've put on the Word. The living Word became flesh. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Yeshua. And if ye be Christ, then ye are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Alright, and we'll, we'll end it here today. Alright, let's pray.